All right. Let's fucking do it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Dusty Show, God's favorite show. Just ask him. He'll tell you. He loves this show. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. Hell yeah. Gonna do what we do on a Friday and kill it. So uh, you are very kind, handsome, and smart for joining me tonight. Uh, folks, you know what I did? I bet you can't guess. Uh, I got my Apple Vision Pro loving this thing. I, I, I'm sick that I had to fucking return it, most likely. But uh, so I never saw this movie before. This is going to sound like a commercial for Apple Vision Pro. They're not paying me. I'm such a chump. I'm doing free commercials for them. Anyway, uh, so I never saw the um, Ready Player One movie. I don't know how I missed this. This is basically a movie about me. Dude, all in VR all the time. Movie has everything. It has King Kong, Mecha, Godzilla, Chucky. It has everything, but never saw it before. So I was like, hey, uh, they got it on sale. I guess, uh, what is it, like MGM or Max or one of them had a movie deal. You get five movies for $10, and it was in there in 3D. So I watched it on my Vision Pro, and what an adventure. It was fucking amazing. Uh, it just adds a whole other level to the experience when you have the Vision Pro that's just fucking crystal clear, and you're up on a big movie screen. You basically have your own movie screen to yourself, and the 3D is like nothing you can experience any other way. It was uh, cool. I really enjoyed it. So if you haven't seen it, recommend it 3D. And uh, they just made a bunch of new movies on Apple Plus available in 3D. So I'm going to watch those. Like Gravity, they now they have it. I don't know why. Like before, they didn't have any 3D movies on Apple Apple Plus. The only one that had 3D movies was Disney Plus. And it's like, Apple, it's your device. Like the only thing to do with this fucking device, really, is uh, watch 3D movies. Why didn't you have 3D movies on your Apple Plus? They make this sense. But now they do. And uh, so they got... Uh, the new um, Mad Max movie. I'm going to watch the fuck out of that in 3D. And like I said, Gravity. They have the two uh, Jurassic Park movies are on there. So like five total. So I got my weekend planned. I'm going to, uh, all I have to say is 4K. Yeah, it's a bargain, really. Now, now seriously, like uh, I understand most people can't afford it. I wouldn't expect most people to be able to afford it. But if you look at it, what it's trying to replace, it's trying to replace your giant TV. Now, I have a big TV. I have a 98-inch TV, um, and uh, they're expensive. Like, the TV costs more than the uh, Vision Pro did. And I have a pretty good stereo system. It's surround sound. I have uh, uh, 11 speakers surrounding me right now, and uh, that costs way, way more than the Vision Pro, too. So it's trying to replace all that. And uh, so it's a bargain, really, but wait a couple generations. They'll be way cheaper. I can't wait you guys get to experience. It's uh, pretty cool. I saw Gravity like in VR in the movie theater, but it's not the same. Like it's better on the Vision Pro than it is in the movie theater. Way better. So uh, looking forward to that. I'll let you guys know how it goes. And uh, no, wrong button, Dusty. Wrong button. No, I did it. Wrong. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, uh, as always, folks, Super Chats are the lifeblood of the show. It's the only way I able to keep the show alive and kicking. Over here, there is a money sign. See my mouse? Boom, by the chat, there's a money. You click it, and you donate money. The more you donate, the more serious I take you, because uh, I am a cheap slut like that. But you can buy my love. That's the great thing. I'm for sale, and I read every single Super Chat. Oh, moralize yourself. So AI will resurrect you in the future. Y your uh, immortal life literally depends upon it. No pressure. Uh, and I'll read them all at halftime and the end of the show. Please help out me and the cats and the super chats. And all right, uh, let's go ahead and kick the show off, folks. Where am I at? Boom. Get over there, Dusty. Boom. There we go. Ha <laughs> I'm back. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and kick it off, folks. We haven't started the show with religious bullshit in a while. So let's do that, shall we? Go. Religious bullshit. Religious 
bully bullshit. It's time for one motherfucking religious bullshit. It's God, I hate religion. I wish it would all die. Go to the pit of hell. Fuck Jesus, y'all. And first off, on tonight's religious bullshit. I think I speak for everybody when I say. Wow. Blobfish is back, folks. And he has a, a new moon bet with him this week. Uh, this time it's Donna Rigney. And uh, unlike everybody's favorite Alzheimer's pink hair grandmother, Cat Kerr, um, no, actually, exactly like that. She goes to heaven just like Cat Kerr does and uh, hangs out with Jesus and shit. Let's see what heaven sounds like, y'all. And so after doing that, consecrating the house back to Jesus, immediately and he said come on open your spirit you did what you consecrated something isn't that like what you do on your honeymoon you consecrate your marriage would you fucking jesus god damn it jesus the house back to jesus immediately mm. and he said come on open your spiritual eyes <laughs> like, I'm gonna show you open. something and instantly i was in the spirit and i was in heaven cool and animals stopped gathering around us and so the father i'm sitting between the father and mm -hmm. jesus who oh, <laughs> and a giraffe comes over oh, and licks my face. Oh my God, sexy. <laughs> I love it. That's my king. I love it. Big gorilla. Big gorilla. The gorilla that I saw before who was pushing the swing one day when I was in heaven with the Father and Jesus. And I'm thinking, <laughs> boy, this swing is really going good. <laughs> yeah, what could possibly make the swing go good? It's got to be a gorilla. I guess in heaven, like animals are smarter. And uh, like, what about the animals we ate? Did they go to heaven too? Aren't they mad at us? Like, I'm going to be sitting around heaven, just fucking chilling with Jesus, and then a cow going to come up and give me the stink eye. He's like, what the fuck's this cow problem? The cow's going to be like, Meow. like, fuck you, cow, what'd I do to you? And the cow be like, mm, you ate me, cheeseburger. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, cow. I'm sorry. I can't even enjoy heaven because of all the animals pissed off at me. Thanks, Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> some angel must be pushing it and i turn around and look and it's a gorilla that's funny it's the ultimate angel i love it so rambe these are god's pets god's so, pets and, and then big, i thought we were god's pets the elephant which i've ridden on before in the mm -hmm. spirit never and forget cat little kittens and Kit, dogs yeah and hell yeah so jesus and i climbed on the back of this giraffe oh, oh what uh, leave the fucking giraffe slow they finally get to heaven had a horrible experience on earth for every second of an animal's life, it's pretty much a fucking nightmare. Just trying to eat something or keep from getting eaten. It's fucking scary as shit here on this goddamn planet. And they finally die, probably brutally, and they get to heaven. And now you fuckers are riding it? Get the fuck off me, the giraffe was saying. Oh, wow, you both climbed on. Very cool. Yeah. So so Jesus is behind me. Oh, I bet he is. Front, Hell and, yeah. Then the giraffe starts mm -hmm. walking. Sexy and spot. brings us over to this hillside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a whole bunch of animals so and it many. went down into a valley there was so many animals i animals. was like oh my goodness Look at all these <laughs> animals there's so many of them thousands and thousands thousands of them and, and jesus said to me you know my kingdom is enormous <laughs> i know you like, think you're the dick. earth is big mm -hmm. my, it's a shadow a shadow of what my kingdom of my dick is like because I was shocked there were so many animals. Shocked. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my <laughs> like Jesus. Oh my you. <laughs> I guess he's, he's behind you. He, he's, anyway, it's true, folks. It's true. And uh, you know how I know it's true? Because I was there. And she can't claim otherwise because, I mean, who is she to say I wasn't all, all also there? And um, I can tell you from firsthand experience, we was butt fucking. We was all butt fucking. So much butt fucking going on. Don't let her tell you otherwise. She was the main one butt fucking. She has a big, huge honking dick in the heaven. And it's an animal's dick. It's a horse's dick. Um, hi, boss. And anyway, folks, I took it. Raw dog in heaven. True story. Wow. So anyway, sorry you guys weren't there. But next time, butt fucking for everybody. And then, on religious bullshit, Cat Williams got invited to Joe Rogan. Apparently, they had some uh, manufactured beef, and so he invites Cat Williams on to work it all out. And Cat Williams, who is a genius, I think we can all agree, one of the smartest people among us, explains how there has to be a God. There just has to be, y'all. Let's listen to explain it to us. The fact that there is a God uh -huh. is the biggest conversation worldwide mm, but, but there's not the truth of the matter is 
there is more reason for you to believe there is a God than there is for you to not. Okay, cool. I love this. I love science and evidence. So the reason I don't believe is because I haven't seen any evidence of it. Um, all, all there's evidence of is that we exist. Yes, the uh, universe exists. It's uh, uh, full of energy, matter continuously changing due to the uh, natural laws of physics. And uh, uh, to my observation, no supreme being seems to be interfering in us or gives a shit about us in any way. But I am very, very willing to listen to evidence the contrary. So hit me with it, Genius Cat Williams. Like the way that things interact. Like mm -hmm. if we're just talking about marijuana or alcohol uh -huh. or whatever that is. Uh -huh. You have to understand that this thing serves no other purpose than to bring pleasure to this small group of beings. All right, first of all, stop. Like, it wasn't like that in the goddamn beginning. See, okay, here's what happened, right? It's just evolution. The plant didn't start off getting you high as balls. First, a, a plant grew up, and it started having... A, some of the plants had a mutation uh, that affected animals in a certain way, very mildly. And so the animals that were affected that way got that pleasurable feeling from those certain uh, mutations, ate more of it, right? And then they shit out the seeds that they ate, and then they grew up, and then the ones that mutated more to give you more of that feeling got eaten more by the animals that shit out. It mutated and evolved over thousands, millions of years, Cat Williams. What you're talking about is not God, it's not design, it's not creation, it's fucking just simple evolution. You have any m more examples? Right. And the fact that it already was set up to do that. It, the fact you talk about evolution? Yes, evolution is, I guess, set up uh, to spread its genes to the next generation and mutate, and the mutations that make it more likely to have your genes spread in the next generation, uh, they get spread on and they mutate further, and the ones that are lead to more likely to have spread, they mutate further and further, and they get spread more, and these uh, characteristics, they got them to spread more to begin with, uh, uh, multiply, right? That's just basic fucking evolution, dude. It didn't start out like that, though that it was already set up on it, this it wasn't planet though. for there to be medicines it, for us to find. It, it wasn't, and though. Utilize. We developed them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, I see the stupid shit like, you're trying to say, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, oh, yeah, so he made a cow. No, to make a cow, it means you had to also have made grass. Uh, and it means... No, he didn't make a cow. Uh, cows were domesticated by, by men over... Since mankind been around, right? And they came from earlier animals... They didn't come out of uh, another cow with four stomachs or anything. It happened slowly over millions of years, Cat Williams. You would have had to have invented a whole new eating system for this animal, no, which no, was no, you good. Wouldn't. No, and you that wouldn't. means you would you would then have to have given him three stomachs to be able to, and you would have to have known that he was going to then emit a gas that was going to be necessary and on the planet. Okay, like, first off, the gases they emit are not necessary for the planet. They're incredibly harmful to uh, anyway mm, yeah like yeah, none of these show. things fertilizer are, all of are, are right all the fact that everything survival. goes together is mm -hmm. how you know it's pretty wild that's how you know the fact definitely that there, oh i guess he schooled me on it it's just basically this is the guy that was on a comedy special not too long ago who put out the tired old trope uh if humans came from monkeys why are there still monkeys you dumb motherfuckers you dumb motherfuckers just so proud of his ignorance so pleased with his own stupidity Do it's, hasn't learned hasn't bothered to research any of this since then since we roundly mocked him doesn't seem to give a shit so uh the perfect joe rogan guest i must say stupidity following stupidity and then, folks, prepare your shock face. Uh, guess who follows Joe Rogan into the Christian grift? <laughs> it's Russell Brand. We all knew this was coming, folks. Uh, when you start doing the right wing grift, eventually you have to get into the Jesus grift, too, because the right wing is pretty much all Christians, right? And uh, at some point, they're going to be like, hey, we're all your fans. Uh, why are you not worshiping our God? We can't give you as much money if you don't worship our God and join our cult. So they always do it, folks. You know, Russell Brand, who is a serial uh, sexual uh, assaulter, allegedly, um, Obviously, he knew he was going to get Me Too, and obviously he knew all this shit was going to come out, but the best way to 
shield yourself against criticism or uh, reinvigorate your image after this shit comes out. Just become a right-wing grifter because, first of all, right-wingers don't give a shit. Donald Trump proves that. They don't care how many people you rape, sexually assault, how awful you are. If you just say you're Christians, they will ignore it. Secondly, uh, if you will pretend to be religious or are part of the uh, Jesus cult, all you have to say is, oh, I'll ask for forgiveness. I don't have to make amends to anybody. I don't have to really uh, improve my behavior. I just said, sorry, Jesus, and it's like it never happened. And then all the Christians would just accept all the bullshit, all the horrible shit you did. Uh, doesn't count anymore. Do over, redo, loophole. So clearly that's what he's doing here. The grift never ends with these shameless motherfuckers. Anyway, here is a short video highlighting Russell Brand's conversion to Christianity. The reason I wear a cross is because Christianity, and in particular, the figure of Christ, are, it seems to me, inevitably becoming more important as I become more familiar with suffering, purpose, self, and not self. And okay, none of that has to do with Jesus at all. Yeah, it became more important to you when you got in the right wing grip and you realized you had to uh, do this to make more money. It takes a certain amount of adulthood, and it might be different for all of us. For me, it seems that it's taken quite a lot to recognize that you need, I need, a personal relationship with God. I went to a Yeah, it takes adulthood. It takes maturity, doesn't it, to begin to believe in fairy tales and your imaginary friend. No, it doesn't. It takes a, a shameless liar. Usually, you have to get people when they're young as children before they believe these ancient fairy tales like, you know, Santa Claus or Jesus. The church, the Sacred Heart in Henley, and I was given this book by a priest. Boring. I started to feel the reality of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear what Jesus Christ is about. Kindness, putting other people first, willingness to sacrifice. Uh, uh, I came to spread the sword is what he said. I came to pit brother against brother, right? Like, you can pick and choose what Jesus said, but I can pick and choose a lot of awful fucking shit he said. Russell, Brad. Uh, always scutinizing authority, staying clear about what justice is and what justice isn't. Isn't we'll God the more... ultimate authority? How can you get more authoritative than fucking God? The most unpleasant character in all of fiction. You can't claim to be a, a Jesus freak and searching for God and also claim to be against authority. A drift from even the most rudimentary morality. How is it that we find our way back to Christ? There's no denying now that we... Uh, Christ has nothing to do with morality. In fact, the, the exact opposite. The prisons are full of Christians and Muslims, very few atheists. To make a good man or any man pretty much do horrible, awful bullshit, it almost always takes religion. It doesn't take religion to be empathetic, to be a moral person. All it takes is uh, empathy, right? The ability to place yourself in other people's shoes, know what they're going through, and want to treat them like you want to be treated, Russell Brand. That's how we do with ancient fiction. We live in a sort of post-Christian and Christian-derived culture. We where don't. People just... We don't. I mean, literally, 70% of our population right now in America is Christian. 90% of everybody rolling us is Christian. Every president ever, all the CEOs of the top companies, all the exec, everybody. What the fuck are you talking about? Bill into the world. Good luck. Good luck out there making sense of all this. <laughs> See what you can base on Maggie Thatcher and only fools and horses. See if you can pull a religion out of it for yourself. Okay, I'll try. He's, He's literally making fun of us for trying to make sense of the world without religion, without fairy tales. But we've done quite a great job of it. You're literally talking to me on a computer, a device that's almost indistinguishable from magic that was given to us not by religion, but by science. We are figuring out how the universe works pretty well, Russell Brand. But yeah, make fun of us because we don't share your grift. Up begins to race. Jesus of Nazareth. This is the one they say can heal blindness. Instantly, the crowd shouts at the blind man, shut up. It is the nature of human beings, the nature of modern life, to silence those who interrupt our routine activities and understandings. We don't like those who speak up, who leave the status quo, who refuse to keep quiet. How could being a Christian be anything other than the status quo? Imagine pushing the Jesus myth and pretending like you're being counterculture in a culture that does nothing but push the Jesus myth. A church every fucking 10 feet, Russell Brand. Lord, make me a channel of thy peace. For where there is hatred, I may bring love. Uh-huh. For where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit Lies, of forgiveness. Lies, grifts. 
Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. And that you would <laughs> keep enlarge me from my evil. Border. Keep me from evil. You are I'm evil. I'm doing Lent. I've stopped eating sugar. That means I'm not having sugar in my tea. Now, as an Englishman, this is an incredible... I bet he's got a lot of sugar in his tea. Ha <laughs> Gay joke! I'm sorry. That's bad. Incredible sacrifice. It's Lent and I'm sugar-free. How many days now? Is it 11, 12 days sugar-free? Have you ever tried living without sugar? Am I reliant on I just, self or sugar? Or sugar? am I reliant on God? And would you give up your connection to God for a biscuit? From- uh, I don't eat much sugar at all. Never eat sweets. All unsweetened drinks and shit. And I don't eat any God not to eat sugar there at Russell Brand. Giving up sugar, you can connect with the divine. Doing this or not. Uh, hallow app that I got off of my mate. Well, actually, I bought it. I got it off of Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus in it. Chosen. Cool. And I once worked for Mark Wahlberg when oh, I'd done you? that show, Ballers. And Jonathan Ballers. Rumi was my body double. Jesus is my body double. That's yeah. my catchphrase. Follow Domine. Buddha would say so. Who knows what histories lie unearthed or subaquatically, to reference briefly Atlantis. There's more to reality than meets the eye. Uh, Maybe the exact amount that can possibly meet the heart. Isn't part of spirituality a personal revolution and upheaval, but perhaps a revolution that goes way beyond that? Just all fucking nonsense word salad. How about... uh... Leaving religion is the revolution. Turning away from the ancient myths you've been brainwashed in is actually a re- revolution against the status quo, against the societal brainwashing. Come on, awakening wonders. Find the truth with me, Russell Brand. So maybe if one of those voices can re- get replaced with Jesus, then the other voice can get replaced with Jesus. All so in replaced. the end, you have yourself talking to Jesus, uh-huh. then Nobody's Jesus talking Jesus. to Jesus. Literally everybody's self is talking to themselves. You're not talking to Jesus, he don't exist. And then just the voice of Jesus, and then maybe no voice at no all. No voice Join at us all. there, become a supporter, support our movement while we awaken together in the holy name of our Father, in the holy name of us all. Join us. Join us. Enlarge my territory. Large my border. So shocking, folks. Who would have ever thought this shameless grifter would continue being a shameless grifter? <laughs> Never saw it coming. Uh, but yeah, we all did. We all knew. Nobody surprised to see Russell Brand follow Joe Rogan down this path. And what you guys think about that? Do you hate Russell Brand? I can't stand his fucking voice. It's just insufferable. I'm seriously nauseated. It's his voice. Almost can't fucking listen to him. But uh, I can. When I'm shitting on him, I can listen to it. That's the only time. Is this so he does not have to pay taxes? Probably. That's probably coming next. Man, I got to get on that grip for sure. He's a simp. Definitely. Made it. Welcome to you, Alan. How you doing? Enlarge my ligma. What's a ligma? <laughs> Don't tell me. Um. All right. Move right along, folks. Let's do some Trash World. The Trash World. The Trash World is a dumpster fire in hell. It's a Trash World. A trash world. Everything sucks. All the goddamn time. Russell Brand is a Christian, y'all, now. In the trash world. First off, on tonight's trash world, uh, only in Florida, folks, they have began to pass a law to lower the gun purchasing age to 18. Yeah, that's cool, right? Not enough guns in our society and not enough young people with guns. That was a big problem we were having. Hey, you can't buy a gun right out of the fucking womb? Yeah, I mean, you can't buy a beer, but you should be able to buy a gun, right? It's America. You should have a gun if you're breathing. So, yep. Tackling the important shit there in Florida. Can't have Florida without duh. And then so many trash humans on the fucking planet, folks. I don't know what's wrong with these people. Like, I, I, I know her life must be miserable to act like this. I'm, I'm trying not to empathize with her too much because she is fucking terrible, a horrible human being who should be placed underneath the jail. But uh, I guess her life is so bad that she wants to make everybody else as miserable as she is, and that's why they act like this. That's the only thing I can come up with. Anyway, this lady was kicking the puppy kennels and then slaps a woman in a pet store. What is wrong with this lady? A lot. Yo, get the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Oh. Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh! Oh my god! 
Didn't even do anything, just standing there. I was sucking her for nothing. And so uh, here she is kicking the puppy cage. And they're like, hey, don't kick the puppy cage. And she's like, who you think you think you are? Tell me I'm the puppy cage. I kick all the puppy cages. They're like, get the fuck out of the store. So she starts harassing everybody, swatting at them, trying to swat the phones out as they record her kicking the puppy cage. Woman just standing there, mind her own business. She decides to smack her for no fucking reason. So uh, they arrested this woman. And, and then, uh, now this wasn't the woman. This, there's another woman I'm going to show you that they arrested and just let her go without any bell or whatsoever, which fucking pisses me off. But yeah, just garbage. What the fuck is wrong with our species, folks? We don't deserve nice things. And uh, it's this one I was talking about. This lady got arrested after this, folks. And then they let her go without any bail or whatsoever, even though she has an extensive cr criminal past. Why are we letting people like this go? I mean, I know that uh, bail actually favors the rich mostly, but there has to be some way without just letting these fucking pieces of shit go that we can tackle this problem. Anyway, uh, this guy is just sitting in the subway playing his cello, minding his own business, trying to bust, trying to make a little extra cash on the side. And this woman just walks up, picks up a bottle, and smashes him in the head with it for no reason. Yeah. Why? Why are these people like this? Is that the same woman? Anyway, they arrested her, just let her go. So she can go smash other people. There's no uh, consequences, right? If they don't make you pay a penalty, then what's stopping her from doing it again and again? Well, clearly nothing. Going to continue doing it over and over and over again. Just shitty New York. And meanwhile, speaking of shitty fucking cops, this innocent man uh, gets harassed by cops. He's cracking jokes the entire time, but he's being arrested for fucking nothing because he looks like somebody they're looking for. New to town. Here's your welcome. Stop out for me. What are you doing? No. Stop out. What did I do? Step out or you're going to get tased. Get out of the car. Tase me. You're not tasing him. All right. Yeah. They are going to tase him. On November 3rd, 2023, a couple just got done putting couches into their new home. Bit my balls. But as they were Shit. starting to leave, officers were looking for a suspect in response to a child abuse report when they saw the male matching the description of the suspect. Here's what happened next. Stop. Yep. What's your name? Stop. What are you doing? I don't have an ID to prove my name to you. You can I tell me that. You can't nope. run up and you won't the believe it anyway. Like what, what is it? Doing? The way you're treating me, you won't believe a word I can say anyway. Say your name. Hey. What's your first name? Sean. Sean what? Step out for me. What are you doing? See, they didn't no. believe him. Step out. He told you. No. What did I do? Step out or you're going to get tased. Get out of the car. Tase me. You're not tasing him. All right. You didn't do anything. Get out of the car. Stop. Let's jerk your ass out of there. Put it in park. Stop. Hey. What are you doing? Hey, stop. Go down. Get on the ground. Not just more squads. Stop. You're going to get tased. Put the hands on. You're going to get tased. Do you understand it? Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. Put your hands on. Get off me. So anyway, it's Tim and his dog. I'm going to play the whole thing. Husband, who is this? Okay, that he abused a child. What? Okay, that, those are the allegations that we're investigating. I don't know this Chris Brotz person, but I ain't him. Am I bleeding? for them? Stab me. Out. So you ruined my clothes, you ruined my day, you can electrocute me, you assume I'm somebody I'm not. This is fantastic police work. I gotta hand it to all of you. Fantastic. He's not a fing abuser of children. I'm just saying the allegations, right? Yeah, that's absurd. Correct, and that's why we're gonna we're gonna investigate. We're gonna talk to all parties involved. After we've already assaulted you. My ex was abusive, like I would never let anyone abuse sure. no, I, I understand that. So at this point, he's not being charged with anything. Those are the, those, those are the allegations. Right now, he's in handcuffs because he's detained. Okay. We came here because of because of the allegations of child abuse. Obviously, me and you can we can both agree that it's a very serious allegation. Correct. There's absolutely no grounds. So so, so our grounds even, so our grounds nothing. was there was a child who was very bad. Okay. There is a child that was abused. That's the only point that matters. But you're trying. No, that's not the only point that matters. Assaulting an innocent person. That also fucking matters. It doesn't give you carte blanche just to do whatever the fuck you want to do. But 10 minutes of that, very, very, very uh, angering. And then, speaking of the death of art, 
I can't believe this fucking country we live in. So, uh, they came out with a new virtual world designed around the uh, Bored Ape Yacht Club. You know, these NFTs, I can't believe these still fucking exist. So, people that paid $70,000 for a JPEG that anybody can right-click and copy and save got invited, finally, uh, to the grand opening, the beta of the new virtual meta world that they created around the uh, Bored Apes. And here's the crazy part, folks. $300 million is what they spent on this, folks. They raised $300 million on this goddamn trash planet for this. For these ugly... I'm not... I don't, they're not art. Characters in bathrooms with graffiti on the wall. There wasn't even any sound. You couldn't text. Not even any chat in this thing. Just complete silence. Log on and you can twerk in a bathroom. $300 million. Imagine how many people could have been helped with that. But no, instead, $300 million worth of digital land in the upcoming game has been sold. Worthless. Everything about this is worthless, worth less than zero. You have to pay me to be involved in it. They sold $300 million worth of virtual land. Nothingness they sold. So just goddamn this planet. Come on, asteroid. Blow this motherfucker up. I don't want to live this planet anymore. And uh, one more, at least uh, some good news. I'm not good news because this is an awful story. Remember the guy that killed the girl who uh, turned around in his driveway? Yeah, America. Well, he got 25 years to life. The judge just shit all in his Cheerios. Judge said, I think you could really possibly do the same thing again. It's obvious to me that you feel justified. You don't take any responsibility for the outcome of your actions. You just don't get it. Claims that he came out there and uh, he was scared because a bunch of teenagers were turning around his driveway. So he fired a warning shot. And then he said, oh, there are some nails. And I tripped over the nails and I accidentally fired into the car and killed her. And they were like, can you show us all these pictures where the nails you're tripped over are? And he was like, oh, no, I don't see them in these pictures you took of my uh, little porch because you lied. Just murder an innocent girl for no fucking reason. These goddamn MAGA boomers think they have the right to fucking kill you if you turn around your driveway. So enjoy the rest of your fucking life in prison, dipshit. I hope it's a miserable experience. And that is my trash world. Fuck yeah, I saw this. It's money laundering. That's it. I don't know if that's true or not. I just think there's a lot of really fucking stupid people who uh, buy anything, have too much money, and will give it away for fucking nothing. You know, like Bic... No, never mind. I didn't say that. Um, and say to me, you're all F scary out there. I know, right? Don't go to America. It's crazy land. So dangerous. And I live in one of the most dangerous areas. Mississippi, one of the most dangerous states of all the whole fucking U.S. Keep my head down. Everyone else nails together at ports. I know, right? You just sometimes trip over a nail and shoot an innocent person. It happens, right? Um, don't hate the game, hate the player. I'll hate it all, every bit of it. Top to bottom, soup to nuts. Yeah, don't drop the soap, old man. Pfft, I'm not going as rape jokes, but I hope he has a bad time, that's for sure. And uh All right, we're along, folks. We're gonna do a Beyond Parody, follow by a Chud Watch, and then we're going to read all of the super chats. So get your super chats in and uh, help out the kitties. But for now, it's time for Beyond! Parody! And uh, I don't know how old this video is. It doesn't matter if it's brand fucking new. doesn't matter if it happened just now live. Uh, you guys can tell me it's old anyway. I know how this is going to go. Anyway, let's roll boomers. I hate to shit on boomers because uh, my mom's a boomer. And uh, boomers more of a mindset. It's not an age, really. Uh, but these old people just think they can do anything and just lie, just lie on the fucking spot. No responsibility whatsoever. Case in point, this Karen came in to pick up some bracelets, leaned all over the counter and shit, knocked the whole fucking thing down. And the first thing she said was, oh my God, I didn't even lean over anything. He just fell on me and almost injured me. Immediately placed the victim, takes no responsibility. Watch this shit. <laughs> I just want my bracelets. They're right over here. Lean it all over it. Yeah. 
literally poured yeah. it out on her. Oh, shit. Uh -huh. This damn thing fell and almost hit me. Mm, she's the victim. The whole desk thing fell. You literally pulled it off. We watched it you. Just, it almost hurt me. No, oh, I'm going to sue. I don't know what the hell happened. Oh, you don't? If only there were a camera. Are you pulling on it or something? Yes, you were pulling on it. I mean, well, there's my bracelet, but I just yeah. reached to get it, and I wasn't even leaning on it. all over. Mm. I mean, I didn't really... what? Might as well just leave it like that. It's kind of heavy. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't, it, even, so. I didn't even get on top of her. Or, or, uh, they didn't right. even pull it on top of herself. Yeah, we didn't see what we saw, folks. You got to believe her or your lying eyes. I know what I believe. I believe her. She got an honest face. I don't care what I saw. And uh, irony is dead, folks. And Cat Terry killed it. Imagine saying this with no hint of self-awareness whatsoever. Cat Terry says, Imagine being 76 years old and spending your entire older years obsessing about Trump hate 24-7. Yes, imagine spending every day of your life obsessing about Trump Imagine building an entire career obsessing about Trump. Imagine basing your entire fucking personality around Trump. Hmm. You get up in the morning, Trump is on your mind. All day, Trump. When you go to bed, Trump, that's your entire life now. And it goes on year after year after year. That's on every MAGA ever. What the fuck are you talking about? You just described your entire fan base. Everybody who pays you, dude. Good God, y'all. What the fuck? Beyond parody, and uh, then you're gonna be surprised, folks. But apparently, uh, these amazing top of the line can't get any better sneakers, uh, known as the Never Surrender sneakers, are uh, on he sale heavily. They've cut their price by 75 percent. Apparently, they have surrendered their price and immediately put them on uh, incredible sales. So still way overpriced. You can get these things for about 10 bucks from Wish. But I don't blame them for cutting the price immediately. Everything Trump touches dies. And then, yeah, oh, but I know who's going to buy them all up, folks. Supreme Court. They about to decide whether Trump is uh, immune from prosecution. Whether he could just murder people and get away with it, not as president. Uh, whether he has no accountability on the law whatsoever. All these people that Trump himself nominated. How is this not a conflict of interest? America! It don't even matter anymore, folks. But uh, nice shoes, assholes. And then, folks, let's check in on Roseanne on this week's Beyond Parody. See how she's doing. I'm pretty sure she's saying it completely fine. Oh I my lord! To some big people. I talked to some important people. Yeah. And now. What in I, the fuck? I, I think I overlined. You my think lips. you think you overlined your lips a little bit? First of all, did she have a lot of plastic surgery done? She's on that Ozempic or whatever the fuck that shit's called. No doubt about it. But she's still insane, crazy as fuck. Imagine being in front of the mirror and doing that to your fucking lips yourself. That's what crazy people do. It's fucking Buffalo Bob up in this bitch. Good God, y'all. Hell nah, Roseanne. Seek help, crazy lady. And uh, then... Speaking of Beyond Parody, you know who is my Beyond Parody hero? Walter Masterson, the best among us. He's always out there trolling the shit out of uh, Trump supporters and Christians. And believe it or not, folks, they actually are this dumb. I know we can believe it very easily. Uh, but let's have a look at the fact that conservatives don't know what the word consent means. My daughter's school, they're teaching consent. Let's make it a little louder, Walter Masterson, so we can hear you. All right. My daughter's school, they're teaching consent. And I don't think my daughter should be learning what consent is. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. It's, that's it's not like... something for the schools. Consent? Let's yeah. stick with math. Reading, writing, Reading, yeah, whatever, science. science and yeah. math. They're teaching my daughter about consent. Consent? Yeah. Do you know what consent is? No. Oh, <laughs> of course he doesn't. Why would he know what consent is? Oh, my God. These rapey motherfuckers. Is it a sex I, I term? Putting a banana in a banana. So consent is like, um, yes, that's okay, or no, that's not okay. And if you don't give consent, then it's um, like... Rape. My Rape. daughter, they're teaching her about consent. 
how old is your daughter? That's a great question. How old <laughs> should she be? How how old do you what? Forty. You have to be forty before they teach you about consent. You just gotta get raped continuously and not even know what consent is every step of the way, and then at some point they can teach it to you. If you don't teach kids about these concepts, then how are they gonna know if they're sexually abused or not? You have to teach them that it's okay to say no, that no means no, that anybody that doesn't listen to your no is sexually assaulting you and you should immediately report them. Good God, no wonder all these Christian children are getting molested all over the fucking place. It, she, hey, so 18, then she can learn about consent. Yes. Yeah. Technically, the age of consent in Michigan is 16. No, she shouldn't. <laughs> this, kid, this guy, I want to call him kid. This guy seems to know a lot about the age of consent laws. Hmm. Nothing creepy about this at all. He's about to go into even more detail about how much he seems to know. He's uh, looked it up a bunch of times. Yeah. Technically, the age of consent in Michigan is 16. No, she shouldn't. Technically. It's Luciferian. You know, Luciferian. Learning about consent. Yeah. Like non binary and stuff, you know. Same Everything. thing. I don't need to teach my daughter about no. consent. No, school's about just learning the basic shit, you're right? I think the age of consent is 16 in the state of Michigan. Why it's still from going. Federal law. <laughs> I'm still going. Stop talking about the age of consent, you creepo. Good God. Hey, the age of consent technically is 16, but you still should have to be 21 before you're teaching what it is, folks. So they don't know. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. All of the yikes. Good God, y'all, and uh, all right, that is my Beyond parody. Are we all yikesing in unison? I think we are. Consent, that icky prison smell. Shh, I love it. It's what turns me on. My kink. These are grown-ass adults. They don't even know words. Well, I mean, there are Trump supporters, so it is to be expected. Not the best, not the brightest, not anything. Uh, 16, exclamation point. Yeah, he wants to make sure that you know that he knows. Creepster extraordinaire. Yep, he's sure uh, giving off all the red flags. None of it left. And uh, so what? I know, right? So what? I don't even know what we're talking about. Are you? Are you? Uh, are you trolling? Because that's not mm, incredibly, incredibly uh, liked around these parts. And uh, all right, let's move along, folks. One more section. Going to do the chud watch, and then we're going to read these super chats. Be sure to get your super chats in. But first. Chud Watch Talking about Chud Watch We talk about Chuds And make fun of them Everybody says Woo! Hell yeah! First off On the Chud Watch Another week Another gaggle of Trump zombies And uh, they are so giddily Awaiting their opportunity to murder us, folks this lady thinks she's bad at Look at her. She's got an evil fucking face. She wants to murder people so fucking bad. She can't wait. These uh, bloodthirsty sacks of goddamn shit. Watch this craziness. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a revolution. What does that look like to you? Total mayhem. But I think it's going to be the only choice that some people see. They say Joe Biden wins the White House again. You don't believe that he actually does. How do how does Trump come into power then? It may be up to us. Instead Is that a physical <laughs> takeover of the White House? Could be. Could be. She a badass, y'all. She gonna kill us all. Gonna break out our AR-15 and overthrow the government. But don't worry, folks. She's a patriot. She's gonna undo the Constitution. I'll put Trump in as a dictator in American democracy. Or as you know it, patriotism. And it wouldn't just be the White House. It would be the country. The Pentagon. Sure. Sure. And you think that <laughs> human it. life could be a it could be a consequence of that? Uh -huh. it could be. It's called it, collateral damage. It's collateral damage. And when they murder us, it's collateral damage. They can't be blamed for it, folks. It's just war. Sometimes you have to murder a bunch of children and overthrow the government, install a reality show orange goof as a dictator. Right? That's just patriotism. And the cost of war. I don't know what to say. These are conversations that last 15 minutes, Nicole. These are the parts, that, when I talk about untang uh, untangling all of this, when I said, okay, well, what does it mean to take over the country? She goes, well, you started in state government and you work with your way towards Washington, right? There, this is so complex and so deep. And again, these are not one-off conversations, though. These are conversations that folks are engaged. I said, are you talk to your family about this, your neighbors? She goes, oh, yeah, we are all ready for this moment. Bring it. 
Please, please, just stop fucking talking and do it already so we can snuff you motherfuckers out. Man, we're going to silence that wet fart real fucking quick. Everybody who has tried it has been killed trying it, you terrorist sacks of shit. So do it, Grandma. Step up or shut up. Meanwhile, uh, Trump went down to the border for another photo op. And uh, as he does continuously, hires uh, people or puts people uh, in the back of his photo ops to look like they're officials, look like they're people uh, they aren't. Like, for example, this guy looks like an official, a border patrol agent or somebody who was uh, working for the government and is backing up Trump's plan for the border. Only, remember when Trump staged that fake UAW rally, Pepperidge Farms remembers, with non-UAW workers? This U.S. Border Patrol agent is not a Border Patrol agent. (gasps) Shock face. He's president of a non-supervisory Border Patrol agents group. Read Militia Group, a.k.a. the Proud Boys. Uh, The real Border Patrol supports Joe Biden. Yes, the real Border Patrol wants them to pass that draconian law uh, that they negotiated with Republicans to pass that Donald Trump... uh, Decided he didn't want to pass because he wants America to be worse. And so he's got to get fake motherfuckers in the background to make it look like the Border Patrol support him. But they don't. But it doesn't matter because nothing matters to Trump supporters. And uh, then another week, another week of Trump saying absolute fucking gibberish. Case in point. People from places unknown, from countries unknown, who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. Okay, that's literally not how languages work. If somebody is coming into the country speaking a language, then there is someone who speaks that fucking language. This is how basic logic works, you orange goddamn idiot. What the fuck? But he's just trying to make it seem like uh, we should have only English spoken in this country, folks. This is exactly why you see all the races. Go back to your country. You're supposed to speak English in this country. This is where they're all getting their cue from. The worst among us following the worst among us. And uh, that just lies, lies, dead by lies. He told this lie on the last show. Now he's telling it again. And same thing on the abortion issue. The abortion issue now... I'm for the exceptions, like Ronald Reagan was for the exceptions, and I think it's very Ray important says to be mother's life. correct, life of the mother. Uh, but that is not what they're doing in these states. You had over, Roe versus Wade overturned, and now the states were deciding that 10-year-olds have to carry their rapist babies. Why aren't you speaking out against that? Why aren't you saying it's a mistake? Why aren't you saying, hey, we should uh, federally ensconce the fact that you can't force rapists to carry, uh, uh, rape victims to carry the rapist babies? Of course, you don't care about any of that. I think it's a very important thing, the exceptions. I also think that they are the radicals because they will kill the baby in eight months, nine months, under Roe v. Wade. They, w- they had the right to kill the baby after birth. I mean, literally after birth no, in they some didn't. cases. Well, that was the governor of Virginia that, that time. Was, that's but, right. Okay, so lie. This was never the case. Roe versus Wade did not make after birth murder legal. It has always been fucking against the law. You can't murder goddamn babies. Trump has no example of this ever happening because it never happened. What he's talking about is, like I said on the last show, the governor of Virginia spoke about women who have babies who are non-viable, who have a baby that's like brain dead and they have to keep them uh, alive through machines. And just like every brain dead person, at some point, the parents and the doctors have to have a discussion where they want to keep the baby on life support. They 100% never talked about murdering alive born babies. But of course, that's a lie because they know the abortion issue is one that they don't do well on. People are angry over this issue. So instead, they have to paint us as though we are the extremists, as though we are actually murdering live babies, which is not fucking happening. All they can do is goddamn lie. And nobody that follows Trump cares anyway. So don't let them get away with it, though, folks. They don't even believe it. Don't don't allow them to pretend like they believe it when they don't. Meanwhile, uh, another chance to use your shock face. So uh, these two guys that I guess were on The Apprentice, they're the ones that came up with the whole idea for True Social and True's new uh, media company. And uh, they're the ones that designed it. They're the ones that put all the hard work in it, and they signed a deal with Donald Trump. Hey, you'll get 90% of it, and we only want 10%. 
10% off the top uh, for doing all the work and giving your, 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 the idea. And Trump was like, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, so they went to business with Trump. They did all the work. They got it up and running. And, and then Trump went to uh, sell, take the company public. And uh, guess what happened? Yeah, he caught them out of their money. He screwed them over, folks. He diluted their shares down to 1% from the 10% they were supposed to get. So he could keep all the money for him fucking self. And uh, <laughs> good, good. What kind of fucking idiot goes into business with Trump and thinks Trump's not going to screw them over at this point? Okay, that's 100% on you at this point. That's all Trump does is fuck everybody over. And it, here's what here's the crazy part and the very depressing part says in this article that Trump is getting like $3.1 billion for this deal. It's hard to believe how much money they just give this guy for fucking nothing. He doesn't even have to do anything. Going to give him another $3 billion, I guess. On top of everything. All he's going to do, folks, he's going to cash out immediately. And then all the idiot MAGA supporters who bought up the stock are going to be left with a bag and lose their fucking money. 100% what's going to happen is what always happens, but I guess good. I guess let him have all the money, fucking money in the world. Uh, less money for other idiots to have. You guys deserve where you fucking get at this point. And uh, then, you guys remember this migrant who was all over Fox News? Trump talked about him all over conservative media. I think even the Young Turks took a shot at this kid. Um... Because he supposedly beat up cops and then he flipped them the bird and he was released from prison without any bail whatsoever. They just le unleashed this criminal back onto the streets after he assaulted cops, y'all. This is how little they care about the boys in blue. This is how little they care about the rule of law. It's a nation in decline. The whole country's going to shit. Here's a Donald Trump talking about it, folks. In New York City, our police are being mobbed, brutalized, and horrifically beaten by swarms of migrants who have no Fucking business migrants. being in our country. No yet business. Then they are released back onto the streets. Right back out. While giving our police officers the middle finger. That's you right. saw that, right? We saw the other it. Day. These are people that come from countries. I guarantee you they wouldn't do that in their country. They wouldn't do that in their country. I know their countries. You do that in their country, they wouldn't be living for more than five minutes. That's right. They wouldn't do that in their countries. Their countries are shitholes, and we want our country to be more like that, right? He nailed them only. <laughs> Guess what, folks? It yeah, like it wasn't true. It wasn't true. Uh, the guy wasn't a part of it at all. The reason he was flipping everybody off is because he wasn't even there when it happened. He was falsely accused. Yeah, John Boda, the immigrant who put up middle fingers after being arrested for the Times Square cop beating, was not there at all. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's office said today, exonerated and complaint dismissed. The image tore up Fox News and was in at least one pro-Trump ad. Yep. This afternoon, the people moved to dismiss the complaint against John Boda. He's been completely exonerated, so yeah, lies, lies, dead lies. Make you afraid of brown people. That's all they can goddamn do. But it works. Odds on favor to win right now because of child murderer Joe Biden. And uh, then here is, I guess this is going to be our next national security advisor, folks. That's what Trump says is going to happen. That's... Uh, the odds on favor right now in this garbage fucking country we live in. Uh, this is uh, former General Michael Flynn. And for those of you who think Christian nationalism can't come to this country, you don't think we can become the next Iran? Gay marriage illegal. Being trans illegal. Uh, national religion. It's all fucking potentially coming, folks. If you don't believe me, listen to them tell you themselves. And, he's and they're talking about the United States of America, talking about the United States of America, because when Matthew mentioned it in the Bible, he wasn't talking about the physical ground that he was on. He was talking about something in the distance. So if we are going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion, one, one, one nation under God and one religion under God, right? All of us together, working together. I don't yeah, going to outlaw all the religions, folks. No more atheism. It's going to be a... Government-sponsored religion. 
and you think it can't fucking happen, okay, fuck around and find out. It looks like it's going to happen. Meanwhile, I covered in the last show, Lauren Boebert's son got arrested on 22 charges. It turns out this fucking giant goddamn sack of shit robbed a woman with a brain tumor, took her last money. Westward reports that police have released more info about an 18-year-old Tyler Bobert's alleged actions, and they include robbing a woman with a brain tumor who said that she only had $75 left to her name. Elected to the highest political body in the land, makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, folks. And this is what she's raising. This is the family values people for you, folks. And also, apparently, he made a sex tape with an underage minor. This is the kid who already had a baby when he was 17. Teenage dad, who Laura Bobert didn't seem to have a problem with. So, yeah, Tyler Bobert supposedly made a sex tape with a fellow suspect who was a female minor, according to affidavit following his arrest. Yeah, well, lock his ass up again. Add pedo to his list of crimes. And then, uh, once again, I know you're going to be shocked, folks, but Lauren Bobert's ex-husband and uh, this kid's dad taking no responsibility for it whatsoever, folks. They're not to blame. You know who's to blame for this? Democrats locking down the government. Yeah. Remember when Donald Trump, the amazing Democrat, was president and the uh, nation was locked down over COVID? That's what really is behind uh, this crime spree, folks. He released this statement. Being a father in today's challenging world can be a heavy task. He's the victim, y'all. With the constant bombardment of information and influences from all angles, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and uncertain about the best way to guide your children. Whatever you're doing, not the best way, clearly. The challenges we have experienced, especially in the last few years, with schools being shut down, social shutdowns, and the depression that was set in from a mismanaged COVID shutdown. That's what it was. For. He's not a bad father, y'all. He's not just horrendous. Everything he said about his family values is not complete bullshit. The Democrats locked everything down. They shut the schools. That's why my kid robbed a woman who has a tumor in her brain for the last $75 and made a sex tape with an underage girl. COVID! It was COVID! Moreover, now despite our best efforts, we all will fall short sometimes. As a parent balancing work, family, and personal life while striving to be a good role model, you failed, for your kids can be incredibly demanding. Aw, is being a daddy hard? Well, you might have should have thought about that before you had fucking kids, dumbass. Moreover, the spotlight of today's media can magnify and distort even the smallest aspect of your life. It's disheartening to see your actions or words misrepresented and sensationalized, painting a false picture for the public. No, we got the picture. You guys are just uh, hypocrites. Uh, you got arrested for exposing yourself to a bunch of underage girls in a bowling alley. Uh, your wife got groped up and uh, gave hand jobs in a crowded theater with children all around it. And then your kid uh, robbing people and having videos made with minors doing sex shit so uh just saying you guys might not be the best role models for society and might want to crawl back under your fucking colorado rock and uh you know never be seen from again hopefully meanwhile in mississippi this is the kind of uh, idiots we are electing so apparently ivf is the uh new Enemy of the right, for some reason, they want everybody to have babies, no abortion, that we're worried about the birth rate in this country, but one of the main ways for infertile couples to have babies, IVF, now is evil? And uh, why is it evil? Well, let's ask the geniuses elected to the highest political body in America. Apparently, according to uh, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, no relation, she blocked it because she was worried that IVF could lead to human-animal chimeras. Oh, my God, folks. This is why we can have nice things. They get all their news from Alex fucking Jones. We are doomed. Why are these people allowed to even walk dogs, much less make laws? But it's because the idiots of Mississippi keep electing the dumbest among us to represent them, and it's never going to fucking change. Uh, meanwhile, even Fox News shocked Steve Ducey, who uh, 
Seems to be rocking the boat a little bit over at Fox News. He's going to get fired as fuck. So you might uh, know that Hunter Biden finally went and testified today. I'm not going to cover a lot of it because I don't give a shit about Hunter Biden. Uh, but James Comer, he's one of the main ones in charge of the Biden crime family investigation. He's the one for a, a year or more been saying, we got to get Hunter Biden here. We got to get Hunter Biden here. Hunter Biden is the key to this whole thing. Got to prove that he gave bribe money to his daddy. All corrupt, every bit of it. And so Hunter Biden came in and James Comer didn't ask him a single question because of course he fucking did it. Even Fox News, like what the fuck? And uh, here's the funny part about this. Look at these two stooges next to him as he's saying this true thing. They don't like the fact that he's telling the truth on Fox News or even questioning it all. They look kind of aghast. Yeah. You know, the yeah. odd thing, speaking of Republicans, you know, James Comer, who ran that committee, mm -hmm. Uh, he apparently left the hearing early and did not ask a single question. Huh. huh? How weird is that? That's very strange. He's been calling for him to come in. <laughs> hey. Look at this guy's face. He's like, mm -hmm. and she's like, huh? Very strange. I immediately tried to change the conversation. Watch her. Not comment. Huh? And immediately try to spin to something else. How weird is that? That's very strange. He's been calling for him to come in. Hey, Hunt, we want Hunter Biden. He didn't ask him a single question. Well, Brian's going to ask questions to Mark Levin, <laughs> and he will answer no them. No comment. That's up on the show. But right, right. Now, yeah. And this guy the during the headlight, fucking with his ring. Nope, not going to comment. Going to let you shut up so we can move on to something else. And all right, that is my Chud Watch. Hell yeah. Now, Dad. And uh, now a quick commercial for my patron. I apologize. And uh, folks, I don't sell no anything on this show. Well, Brian's going to ask questions. I don't allow any advertising to run on the show if I can help it. The only way I make money on the show, the only way I keep the lights on is for you guys to support the show. And uh, one of the best ways to support the show is my patron. Uh, Patreon.com for check podcast. Link in the description of this video. If you click on it in the description, boom, right here is my patron. And you get access to the after party, which is uh, every single night after the show, I do another show called the after party. It's 20 to 30 minutes long of all the stuff. I didn't cover the main show. And it's like, in a way, sometimes it's better than this show because it's all the hodgepodge of stuff that's up in any categories. There's a lot of interesting stuff I cover. So if you watch two, three shows that I do a week, could you please consider chipping in a few bucks to my patron? It helps out me and the cats and the dogs that we rescue here. And uh, I, I work hard. I'm just trying to make a living wage doing what I do. So if you like what I do, please support me and help me make a living wage. Uh, uh, man, everything's so expensive now, y'all. I'm really trying and I appreciate you and I'm sorry for uh, the advertisement. And all right, let's do the super chats. Hell yeah, how we doing everybody? Jacob Bowers, welcome to Dust Buddies. Hell yeah, spam the chat with impunity, you sexy son bitch. Angry hair piss, ten dollars. Can you please make an AI video of Hitler doing one of his speeches in English with Trump's whiny tone? Um, I could, but I'm waiting for the new AI programs to come out to make it easier. It's still a little bit too much trouble to do with right now, but it will very soon be easy to do all that kind of stuff, and I'll be having much more of that on the show to the chagrin of a lot of my Unabomber viewers who don't like AI. Uh, blows against the Empire. Hey, hey, and thumbs up to you, Blows. Hope you're doing good tonight. BBC! My good friend, BBC. Fam, I never ask anyone for anything ever. I stand on my own. Um, I give to everyone that I can, when I can. That's a true story. However, I'm asking all of you who can to set up my channel, book a day, and you will understand if you watch my last two uploads. So, uh, book, uh, so Dave, uh, who is BBC, is having problems with the VA. He is a vet, and the VA is being very racist against Dave, and he's been trying hard to uh, go to all his supervisors to whistleblow, to not only make things more equitable and fair for himself, but all the other veterans who are experiencing uh, racism and inequality in the VA, and uh, he's, his efforts are falling upon deaf ears as the VA doesn't seem to give a shit, so you guys should go subscribe to uh, Dave's YouTube channel, at Book of Dave 3632 and uh, lend him your support, he can definitely use it, and thank you, BBC, and 10, 10, all of you guys who got free memberships to the, the Dusty Show, uh, better go sign up for Dave BBC's YouTube channel. And uh, much love. And Dower Panda, also much love to you, Dower Panda. How you doing? My Facebook friend. Hope you're well tonight. And uh, Scott Wilford, Jesus is real. I know, right? So real. Uh, where he at? I ain't never seen him. You got any more evidence than just your word, motherfucker? But thank you for the $2. Why is Jesus so cheap? Hey, if Jesus is real, 
you would comment back to me and you would give me $50. I'm just saying, you could prove right now Jesus is real. Put your money where your rhetoric is, Scott Woodford. Mm -hmm. I will believe right now $50. I am cheap as shit. Do it. And uh, George Russell Rebrand. I, I love that. That's mine now. I, I just remembered. I've been using that forever. Dave, my buddy from Dave from New Zealand. Got to pretend to work for a while. So you're all in my backpack. Huge apologies for how freaking totally wasted you're all going to get, or you're welcome. Hell yeah, I love being in your backpack. I wish I was in your back pocket. You sexy New Zealand motherfucker. Kiwi love, Dave. Little baby, what up, little baby? Pets are expensive. God damn it, I know. I uh, just increased my uh, flea war and started getting the more expensive flea medication. I need to put it on my uh, wish list. The cheaper medicine is on the wish list, though. I got to upgrade and put the more expensive. But it's working so much better now, folks. Way better. Uh, so it's worth it not to get eat up by my enemies, the fleas. And then, welcome to us, buddy. Chauncey Luckett. Spam the chat. You awesome slut. Isaiah Tyler, did you hear that Florida wants chaplains in schools or mental health counselors? I did hear that. More theocracy. More indoctrination of our children. But, oh, they were worried about children being indoctrinated in schools, aren't they? Pit Hodgick, 499. Dusty, I think the two assailants in New York City pet store subway bottle just aren't being held on bail, but will still be brought to trial and sentence. Yeah, but they keep skipping their trials and shit. That's the problem. What are Republicans and $10 if they decide presidents are immune? Biden can take advantage of that to dispose of Republicans permanently. Yeah, he could just kill Trump, it seems like, but he won't because he's too much a fucking pussy. Biden ain't going to do goddamn shit. Chauncey Roseanne looks like Cesar Romero from Joker. He does look like that. From the 60s Batman. Longtime fan of uh, the greatest show in the history of mankind. Hey, thank you for your honesty and your loyalty. Love you, Chauncey. Dara Panda, five more. Got them five, five uh, dusty memberships. Better see all of you guys at the after party. Look into the community section of YouTube for the link to the after party. Um, Gina Harry, $10, isn't selling virtual land fraudulent. It's definitely one of the many reasons why I don't do it. Um, I guess it's not. Apparently, they made $300 million, so uh, must be legal somewhere. Thank you, Gina. Water polo wizard, dollar dues just for the kitties. Hell yeah. They're all sitting down on my feet. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's six cats at my feet. Not a goddamn one of them on the show. You guys literally have one fucking job. Be my co-host. They're like, feed us, motherfucker. More kitty treats. Man, I went and bought some more kitty treats today. It's $15 dollars a thing a, a little package of kitty treats 15 fucking bucks i went to wendy's today i got a meal for two with 30 bucks what is happening it seems like i'm making an okay living but it just yeah, god damn it i ain't swaggering cat 20 dollars. the ferals don't consent too much more than an occasional nose boop but they still send their regards they consent you can do whatever you want to they love you enough you know you know it's true um Zephila, thank you, Swagger Cat. Good to see you tonight. Zephila S, twenty dollars. Hey, Dusty, I finally got my YouTube account fixed to be allowed to donate again. Woo woo! Hell yeah! So now I can finally greedily bask and wallow in your acknowledgement of the keyboard I sent forever ago. That was you. Hell yeah! I used that thing forever. That thing was fucking awesome. Mechanical keyboard. I fucking love that keyboard, man. It finally uh, gave up the ghost after a while, but I used that shit forever. I didn't know that was you that sent that. I got it in the mail. It was like a mystery, but no. It was very appreciated and very used. And Dara Panda, more socialism. Awesome. Everybody loved a Dara Panda. You rock. Water Polo Wizard, this is one for the doggos, even though we don't get to see them. I do need to go. Actually, uh, Ken has been working on the outdoor porch for the dog area, so maybe I'll go out there and film it sometimes. It's looking a little better. I'm not so embarrassed of it. And five more from Dara Panda. Keep it going, Dara. You continue to rock. Social loves. Help me be seen. Dusty, I emailed you some funny videos I put together. LMK, if you find it. All right. I don't think I saw it yet, but I will check it out. Um, thank you. I appreciate you so much, Social Twitter is very generous. And thanks, everybody, that sends me stuff for the show. It is very helpful. And BBC, thank you, Dusty. Love you, bro. Stressing right now. Shrooms on board to come. Don't stress. Everything's going to work out. We're all in this together. Regardless of what happens, you're still awesome. And thank you, everybody donated. I very much appreciate it. Very generous. And uh, still plenty of time to get your super shots in. Going to read all the rest of them at the end of the show. So immortalize yourself forever and ever. But for now, you get very depressed with me. Because it's time to... Free Palestine! Raise your power fist up.
And uh, I know you guys saw this. Another horrible series of human rights abuse by the IDF. Just then, the moment Israeli tanks targeted hungry people waiting for aid and gossip. They're literally starving these people to death. A baby just started death yesterday. Children starving. You know what desperate people who are starving do? Anything they can to survive, folks. But this is what they want. And so I guess... This is what the IDF says. The IDF says they were scared because all these hungry people were making them feel scared. So they had to turn their tanks on them and fire at them. Now, the IDF claims that uh, they just shot warning shots and they didn't actually hit anybody. But everybody on the ground, the Palestinians said, no, you guys murdered like 100 people. The IDF said, no, we were shooting warning shots and they got trampled to death and run over by cars and shit trying to flee our fire. Even if that were true, you're still fucking responsible. But nobody should believe anything the IDF says because you guys keep getting caught lying over and fucking over again. And also, you seem like a bloodthirsty, psycho child murderer, so your word should not be taken uh, by default under any circumstance anyway uh, here's the live genocide coming to our screens every fucking day here's the tank turning against the people they're literally just trying to get flour to make bread so they don't start to death folks and uh, yeah here's the tank turning firing at them starve them and then kill them when they try to come and get food because they're fish in a barrel at this point folks Brought to you by the Biden administration. Some dipshit messaged me, Lang Diggy, who used to be cool, but now I have no respect for, left a message on my uh, channel that's saying Biden wasn't responsible for any of this. What a sack of shit you are. This is what you're apologizing for. This is what you're lying about. This is what you're gaslighting about. Like, literally, you can spend your time, if you want to lie, Lying for something positive, like, hey, you know, Anne Frank is not in my attic, Nazis. You know, you could lie about that, but instead, you're lying about things that we can see for our own eyes is not true. Like, we know that Joe Biden is funding Israel. We know that he is going to the UN, vetoing everything. We know for a fact that he's going around Congress and giving them weapons without any oversight whatsoever, everything they want. We know after thousands upon thousands of children were murdered, uh, he responded by going around Congress and sending them even bigger bombs. So, by claiming Joe Biden has no responsibility for any of this, you're gaslighting. You're lying about things that we can see with our own eyes are not true. And imagine what we would think about somebody who would lie about something like that, who would lie to cover up for child murderers, who would lie to cover up for genocide. Imagine how low we would think you are, how disgusting of a piece of shit we would think you are. That's what I think about you now. I don't want you as a fan. I don't want you to watch my show. I know you're probably going to hate watch it and whine and bitch because that's what you motherfuckers do. You never just go the fuck away. But please just go away. I do not want to entertain you. I don't want you to even fucking look at me. I want you to think of me as somebody who is dead, who doesn't fucking exist anymore, because the mere thought of entertaining you for a fucking second it disgusts me, you human vile piece of fucking trash. I hope that was clear. And uh, then, more of this, folks. This incident. Israeli tanks. Just target citizens waiting for humanitarian aid in Gaza. So, tonight... Let me turn it up. At 4 a.m., it happened. Some flowers, some flower bags entered the north of Gaza Strip, and people started running to get that flower, to get that food for their families. So the Israeli tanks opened the fire on them, shooting and killing more than 80 people, wounding more than 400 people. Their blood was mixed with the flower. The mothers and sisters, the family, will never bake that flower, will never bake that bread. They will never get back to their homes. They, they said goodbye to the, to the family to, to get some food, and they will never get back to that food again. They were killed. Israel is using the starvation weapon against us. Israel is using the, the starvation weapon against the north of Gaza Strip yep. to force people to leave, to evacuate, to, to empty the north. They are, st they, they are starving people. They are killing them when they succeed to get some food. They're starving them, pushing them into a certain space, 
And then when they go to get food so they don't die, they're killing them, folks. And yes, he meditated a massacre happened in Gaza today. Here's some overhead footage. It's kind of hard to see, but like this is what hungry people are like. Look how many of them there are, folks. It's like ants. They forced all these people to the south, every one of them. And they're starving to death. Hovering around any little bit of aid they can possibly get. And then at some point they start firing and they start running off and the trucks start running over fucking people. They start this stampede. Yeah, here they are running. As the terrorist IDF. And yeah, there's people jumping on the trucks trying to get the food so they don't start to death. And the, and the trucks are trying to get away from the shooting and are running over a lot of them. Like 100 people dead, folks. And you might remember, last show, Joe Biden was like, yeah, Monday, we're going to have a ceasefire Monday. Just another weekend of genocide, Jack. And we got it all taken care of. And hmm, suddenly something happened that puts the ceasefire in doubt. Amazing how that just happened to happen. Now Joe Biden is saying, oh, I guess it's not going to happen. I guess this complicates the situation now. Curious. Almost like they fucking did it on purpose. And yes, even CNN is reporting it. At least 100 killed and 700 injured in a chaotic incident. An incident. That's a great way to describe uh, genocide and murder. Where IDF opened fire as people waited for food in Gaza, Palestinian officials say. No word to describe the evil, folks. The Israeli army calling starving Palestinians waiting for food aid around humanitarian trucks a violent gathering, which made its soldiers feel unsafe, the Israeli Daily Hearts reported. Israeli soldiers then proceeded to indiscriminately open fire on hungry Palestinians, killing dozens and wounding hundreds. But they so scared, y'all. They so scared of these people. They're starving. They had to do it, folks. They're not to blame for anything they do. Hamas is responsible for everything that happens. Meanwhile, this uh, photo got released of Israel running over a Palestinian with a bulldozer. They blocked it out, folks, but you can still see the zip tie on the hands. Israel ran over a Palestinian in Gaza with a bulldozer. Everything was flattened, but you could still see the zip tie on his right arm. Pure evil, folks. Not the first time they've run over protesters, people with bulldozers. Just right in their face, but they know they can do anything, folks. They can, they can take a baby. They can flay the baby alive screaming. They could fry up the skin of the baby, eat it right in front of us on screen. And Joe Biden would say, Israel has a right to defend itself. He would send the bigger bombs. They would gaslight us and tell us if we're against them frying up and eating babies alive. That we're anti-Semitic, that it's blood libel. That's what they'd say. Michael Rappaport would be on there saying, What? Are you saying we can't eat babies now? Since when can we not eat babies? 100% that's what will fucking happen. And then you got, once again, I'm sorry for the gender slur, but I don't know what any other word to use for this woman than cunt. This fucking cunt. Now, when you watch this, keep in mind, you might be wondering, why is she behaving this way? Why is she behaving so unlikably? She must know how this is coming off. She must know that anybody who sees this is going to hate her. She does. They want to be hated, folks. This is what you have to understand. They have this oppression fetish. Their entire personality revolves around being oppressed. And unless people are actively hating them, they don't have an identity. So watch this shit. Narcissist victim blaming Palestinian refugees. She's blaming them for the fact that she's supporting their murder. Oh, hello to the people of Gaza. I want to help you have a better life. All you need to do is stop playing victims all the time. You said this is going to be... Imagine this woman accusing other people of playing the victim all the time, living in a relatively safe-ass country of Israel on a normal year, seven times safer than where I live. During a wartime, it's still two to three times safer than where I live, right? She going to accuse the Palestinian who she is indiscriminately genociding of playing the victim all the time you said this is going to be a safe place how many times did you lie to us about this place is being safe and then, then turning back and bombing us do you know how the jews arrived they always looked at the bright side so i think oh my we talking about you are the most pessimistic motherfuckers i ever seen in my goddamn life jews look at the bright side that is the antithesis of everything your culture continuously makes fun of itself about
think you should say thank you to the Israelis during war. You are still well informed. Where yep. you should go? Thank well, you. Well, I would not go to Egypt. So maybe, like the IDF said, go to the north. Yeah, Literally, the, uh, you told them all to go south. You bombed the shit out of the north. You destroyed all the infrastructure. You murdered anybody that stayed there. And now you're telling them to go back. What the fuck? IDF is warning you. Oh, no. You are talking to us about being safe? Now, I want to understand, safe like who? The people you murdered? The one you beheaded? Oh, you're talking about the only Jews you love being in Gaza. You don't like the idea? But you love the Jews inside your tunnel rat. You opened a war. Maybe you should also complain that the idea did not give you a massage. Maybe a glass of wine next to some candlelight. After October 7th, you better save your complaints. Here's an idea. Your government should protect you. They got more than 80% of your support. But you want to complain to the people you slurred. We lied to you you say thank you we are even talking to you wow you are the most pampered spoiled and privileged people i've ever saw you need to say allah akbar that you chose the jews to be your enemy if your violence was pointed to another country western or muslim you could only dream about our ratio of one to two listen someone gotta say it to your face for decades you are the same you don't evolve you don't change all you are about is violence and alligator tears even covid was able to evolve couple of times in the last couple of years just the projection of every bit of this. But yes, she knows how awful she comes off. It's on purpose. She wants us to hate her, and I do. I don't like you. Meanwhile, I remember this guy who went in and took the home of a Palestinian person, stole their home because this is what they do. They illegally take over settlements, kick Palestinians out of their home, and they just give it to Jewish people in America. They fly over there and they give them free homes in occupied territory. And then you wonder why they're so fucking pissed. Anyway, they interview this guy. He's even a bigger sack of shit than you imagine. You're from Brooklyn? No, I'm from New York, from Long Island. From New York. What right do you have to live here? The right I have is that the owner of the house wants me to live here. And he wants there to be Jews living in his house, and he wants to. And I, I got chosen for whatever reason. It ended up being me. Yeah, you are watching. stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. So why do you live here? So, because I live here, because it's important, and because not too many people want to live here, and it's important to, to strengthen this neighborhood, to make sure that this neighborhood is not lost in any future peace deal. <laughs> So your position here is a political position to keep Palestinians out of it? Not to keep Palestinians out of it, to keep Jews in it. And therefore keep the Palestinians who were here out of it? No, not, that, that's not, no. Yes, yes that's it is. An un, that's, a, that's a necessary evil. And they're not coming back So you admit here. you're evil. So whether I am here, whether I am not here, whether it's me, and whether it's why someone are they else, whether back? it's a monkey, whether it's a giraffe, they're not coming back into this house why? ever. Why? I understand why they're angry at me. I understand why they dislike me. Uh -huh. I did not do this to them. I'm you not did. doing this to them. You are. As I said, if I leave, I'll be replaced immediately. And I venture to think that whoever comes here is not going to be as easygoing as I am. Yeah, you're so chill, dude. What a great guy you are. Just fuck it. God damn it. But hey, they rule us. What are we going to do? Like, what am I going to do? That guy right there, he rules me. He is my boss. Because Joe Biden ensures that all these people are better than us. They, they, they are our godmen, our godwomen. They, they own us. They put their dicks in our face. They rub their smelly, greasy dicks around our face. And what are we going to do? Except for, ooh, it smells good, master. Thank you. Thank you for letting us live in your world, master. That's all we can fucking do, folks. That's reality. I, I can't pretend like it's not. I can't pretend like that guy's not my boss because of Joe Biden. Because not, it's not just Joe Biden, of course. Joe Biden is just carrying on the long tradition of Israel worship and the ensuring that Israel rules us and there's nothing we can do about it. Meanwhile, another week of, what, hundreds at least, children murdered, bombed, blown to fucking bits. And John Fetterman has found one child on this earth he wants to take up for, and guess who it is? It's Lauren Boebert's child. John Fetterman says, This is a family in crisis, and the recreational cruelty I see on social media needs to be out of bounds. I know the impact this has on children. I'm calling for restraint because cruelty has substantial collateral damage. Now he cares about cruelty to children. Now he cares about collateral damage, folks. When it's a conservative son. Not when it's all the babies he's supporting being murdered. Not when it's the children he's helping to genocide. 
But when it's a kid who's being held accountable for his 22 crimes, robbing a woman who has a tumor ahead of her last $75 and making a sex tape with a minor, this is what John Fetterman feels the need to go on his Twitter and defend. We can't ever forget that they didn't sign up for this. You know who didn't sign up for this? The 15,000 children that were murdered in Palestine. You ogre sack of fucking shit. God, I hate this man. Hate. Hate. And yes, I can excuse the genocide of Palestinians, but I draw the line at making fun of Bobert's son. You can excuse genocide? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Stroke or ace has no problem. If the kids are brown, fuck them. If it's Lowen Bobert's white bread son, oh my God, think of the children, y'all. Just fuck everything about the Democratic Party. Fuck everything about this goal. Fuck everybody supports this shit. Meanwhile, on uh, Charlie Kirk's podcast, co-hosted by uh, Jack Piece of Shit, here's how low they are, folks. Now they're uh, making fun of Aaron Bushnell, who set himself on fire to try to save some children from being murdered by the uh, government of the United States. Here they are uh, mocking him, of course, because this is how uh, how low they are. Some people said, uh, rest in power, Aaron Bushnell. Uh, Aaron Bushnell was the guy's name. I'm not sure if we ever said that. And so they say rest in power, which is the same thing they've said about uh, George Floyd, um, Trayvon Martin, a lot of those kind of BLM caused celebs. And this caused backlash because several people were saying, you can't say rest in power for Aaron Bushnell because that's actually a, a phrase you should only use uh, for, for, black for black people who are killed. Now, I will note Aaron Bushnell did become black, but they don't seem to be recognizing that transition. <laughs> Some people said... <laughs> it's so hilarious! He burned himself up! It's so funny. Mocking this guy who's just trying to help people, gave his life, trying to save children. Hilarious. Meanwhile, yeah, they're all doing it, folks. Conservative Twitter, conservative influencers everywhere. Dude accomplished nothing but becoming a meme. Oh, yeah, imagine that. Feels like the irony of a Christian mocking a man sacrificing his life for his beliefs cannot be overstated. Yeah, I thought giving your life for what you believe to save people was a good thing. But nope. Not if you're trying to save children from being genocided, I guess. It's uh, worthy of derision and mocking. Super cool, Christians. And then, meanwhile, on The View, Whoopi Goldberg has decided to give the same uh, bullshit argument that Seth MacFarlane gave on The Bill Maher Show, urging people not to be one-issue voters without daring to say what that issue is. The question people are asking is, is what will this impact of these uncommitted voters be and have in the general election? Uh -huh. I personally don't know, but I have to tell you that <coughs> you're in danger of seeming like a one-issue voter. Yeah, the issue is child murder! You fucking cunt! Yeah, that is a great issue to be a one-issue voter to try to stop children from being murdered. And yes, regardless if you're going to end up voting for Joe Biden or not, it is very important to make every one of them feel like you might not vote for them because of this one fucking issue because it's the only way we can put pressure on these child murderers to stop murdering children. And wagging your finger at people is the exact opposite of what you're doing. What you should be doing is saying, Biden needs to immediately take this very fucking seriously. We hear you all, the Democrats hear all you undecided voters, all you who are threatening not to vote for Joe Biden. Instead of wagging my finger, I am going to join you in doing everything we can in pushing Joe Biden to stand up against Israel, into demanding a fucking ceasefire, into holding Netanyahu accountable for the fucking war crimes. This is what we'll do. This is the only way Joe Biden has a chance of beating Donald Trump. I hear you. I will push fucking with you. You're doing the exact opposite of what you should be doing. You're wagging your fucking finger. You're not joining in on the people who are on the right side of fucking history. And what you're doing is absolutely making it more likely Donald Trump is going to win, you stupid fucking idiot. And that's, I'm pretty sure, not where people are at. I understand you're upset. Do you? We talked about What are we upset about, Whoopi? Say it. Yesterday. I understand you're upset. Uh-huh. About what? But. But? No, but. You know, 
either we're going to fix it together or we're not. We're not, though. Unless we put pressure on Joe Biden, unless he fears that he might lose, unless he fears he might be responsible for the end of democracy as we know it, he ain't going to goddamn do shit. We're not fixing it together by not holding him accountable, you moron. And the other guy is not going to fix it at all. So no. it is for me. Joe Biden not going to fix it. Okay? He's not fixing it. He's doing the opposite of fucking fixing it. Quit gaslighting us. I, I, no, no, no. <laughs> you know I'm just saying. Fuck all y'all. When you think about one issue vote, uh, what's the you issue? have to realize that it, in, the re in our world, uh -huh. we're all sort of connected to all Yeah, that. like the, we're connected to the children that are getting murdered by our government, right? So this isn't a one issue vote. When we're talking about, listen, <coughs> you don't have to like the person, but you, you have the right to vote for the person that you want. That's all good. But to have a non-committed vote for me is, is hard. Because yeah, I, you're a privileged fucking idiot. Because you don't actually give a shit about all the children being murdered by our government. You're too rich. You're too fucking privileged. You're too goddamn soft and fucking stupid. Everything about you is fucking annoying and wrong. Know how hard people fought to get the right to have their voices heard. Make your voice heard. I am, but, bitch. But, but you know, but stand what? Stand up for what you're. you're I am, saying. bitch. But this is right? they're trying to. Right. That's exactly what the fuck they're doing. They're letting their voice be heard, and they're standing up and against child murder in the only fucking way they know how. Why aren't you? And speaking of round with Biden off the goddamn cliff. You know who's a giant fucking disappointment? Brianna Wu has decided to become a child murder apologist. Here she is gaslighting. Are people just unaware? Biden has dedicated his entire State Department to pursuing a ceasefire for many months. Yeah, everybody who's unaware of this, raise your hand. Here he is. Here is his administration at the UN vetoing any accountability, vetoing a, a demand for a ceasefire. Why are you goddamn gaslighting us? I know why. Because you're in the Democratic cult and you don't actually give a shit about any of these fucking children. You don't have what it takes to stand up to Joe Biden, stand up to the Democrats, and do what's necessary to push them to stop this fucking genocide. Instead, you're going to stick your head in the sand. You're going to lie to us. You're going to try to make us believe that they're doing everything they fucking can when we can see with our own goddamn eyes they are not. Bottom fucking feeder. That's what you are, Barana Wu. I defended you on the show before. Never again. Meanwhile, fuck around to find out, Joe Biden. Washington State's largest labor union endorses uncommitted over Biden. Yeah, these are the people he needs to win. They're ignoring this at their own peril. People like Whoopi Goldberg. People like Seth MacFarlane. You're trying to send a message that you don't need us? Let's fucking see. Motherfucker, let's see if you need us or not. And I agree with Mehdi Hassan, everything he says right here. Let's say that this, I don't know what you would call it, this gambit of the Biden administration to force Netanyahu to sign a document <laughs> saying, I will only use American armaments in compliance with international law, which, which Netanyahu seems reluctant to sign. Yeah. What if that forces some sort of change in leadership? in Israel. Might that be seen as more concrete even yes. than, than a ceasefire? I actually no. think the aid position is somewhere that Biden can have a lot of effort. You know, conditioning aid is very popular on the Democratic base, even members of Congress. I think it's mad that five months into the war, the Americans say, can you sign something saying you'll follow international law? Shouldn't that have been done on October the 8th? Yes, uh, but they never do. We're asking that now. And by the way, I also think it's crazy that Joe Biden is willing to wreck his presidency potentially and yep. American democracy if yep. Trump gets back in yep. for Benjamin Netanyahu, yep. a man who has basically I can't find the daytime language for it, done bad things to every Democratic president in my lifetime. Yep. Bill Clinton struggled with Netanyahu, Barack Obama struggled with Netanyahu, and now Biden could sacrifice his own presidency. For who? For Bibi? Biden is going to sacrifice America, American democracy, for Netanyahu, who he knows is a far-right extremist terrorist. And that just shows you, folks. Joe Biden's loyalty is not with the United States. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about me. Israel, that's all that fucking matters. In Israel, we trust. That is our God. That is who we worship. And ain't shit none of us can do about it, folks. 
Ain't nothing we can do about it. Whoopi Goldberg gonna sit on there. Seth McFarlane gonna sit on there. Gaslight us all. Browbeat us. Joe Biden still getting 90% of the goddamn Democratic vote. Both sides fuck. It's all garbage. And that's my Palestinian coverage for this week. Medi has a new show coming soon. Good. I hope he fucking kills it. That guy's awesome. Of course, I hate putting him on a pedestal because he's only going to uh, disappoint me. Does the applauding like the audience? Yes, I'm doing the uh, train seal idiot fucking clap that they do on all those shows. I have nobody to think for themselves in any goddamn way. Just the fucking dumbest motherfuckers. The, the issue is genocide. She won't say that, though. She never once mentioned the dead children or the issue. She's just browbeating and finger wagging. You know, I love me a good finger wagging, but it's not effective at all. And, uh, all right, we're along, folks. Gonna do a, oh, we got one more sec. We got one more section. This is it. This is the last section of the show. And I guess it makes sense. We're only, uh, an hour and 35 minutes into the show. So last chance to get your super chats in. No heroes tonight. No palate cleansers. None of that shit. We're going to finish this off on a little bit of. What the fuck? Great way to end the show. Little what the fuck. And um, folks, I got questions. What is a confidence drill? Let me just show you the clip. So the title says, French soldier fails confidence drill. I don't know if the guy standing here who is getting shot around is the French soldier that failed the confidence drill. I don't know if the guy shooting the gun is the guy that failed the confidence drill. I don't know what a confidence drill is. I've watched this video. I still don't know what it is. I looked it up. I Googled it. Still don't know. But uh, see if you guys can figure out from this video what a confidence drill is. Who's that far? He just shot the guy. He literally just shot the guy. <laughs> through and through. <laughs> so, is this guy the guy that failed the confidence drill? The other guy? And this guy didn't even fucking flinch. Look at this bad motherfucker. Doesn't even fucking flinch when he gets shot. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, you shot me. Who are these goddamn idiots shooting guns at each other? What is this? This goes against everything I know about gun safety and gun training. Everybody should be a failure in this scenario. Like, what the fuck? I know. That's why I call it. What the fuck? It's aptly named. And uh, then, meanwhile, in Venice Beach, California. All right, this is a crazy one, y'all. So, uh, big girl having a fight with naked lady. And Big Girl got some kind of uh, medieval weapon that she's using to battle Naked Lady. Let's go. So yeah, Big Girl whacking Naked Lady with some kind of medieval flail. Naked Lady, she doing pretty good. She bobbing, weaving, she on her toes. She a dancer. You can tell she a dancer. And then Big Girl's like, Bitch. I'll whack you with my medieval club and the naked leather. Bring it. Bring it. And big girl clumsy. She throws it at her. What? You just gave her the weapon. No, that's not what you want. You gave big gave naked lady the weapon. And so she's like gonna sashay up with her weapon. She's like, oh how? Who got the power now? And now they're fighting each other with medieval weapons. Big girl got her new medieval weapon. And they're just sitting there whacking on each other. And hey, she drops it again. You so clumsy. So now Naked Girl got two medieval weapons. You doing bad in this scenario, big girl, okay? I guess you're gonna look for another medieval weapon. Now you get both your weapons to Naked Girl. Naked Girl gonna fuck you up. I don't even know what's going on, y'all, but I love it. America, we are the greatest country on earth for a reason. Yeah, I know. And uh, that, oh, what the fuck? You guys see this one? This is uh, irritating. This went super viral, one of the most viral videos of this week. So this guy, a uh, swimmer, and the lead is he's like killing it. Seconds here. He's swimming his ass off. And so then he, uh, he gets back. Look, he's so far ahead of everybody else. And he wins the race. And this is a teammate. 
And he's like, woo, I just won the fuck out of this race. I can swim like a motherfucker. I basically have fish, bitches. And he's like over here uh, celebrating with his teammate. His teammate's hugging him and everything. And he's like, yeah, you did it. It was a personal best. Said a personal best. And, and then the next thing you know, he got disqualified. It's like you went to your friend's lane and that's against the rules. And he's like, whoa, whoa, what wait the fuck? Hold on. They're just saying that Owen Lloyd was disqualified. Yeah, I know. I just explained what all that. Happening? And he's like, I can't fucking believe it. We're seeing the displeasure from Dan, his teammate. Oh, no. I'm going to cry. Yeah. Well, we're getting this news live as stupid rule. You heard it from the PA announcer. Dumb. And so now his friend wins instead. Number one. His friend ain't happy about the it. the winner, Ross. Uh, this is a strange one, I know, for you. Congratulations on one hand. Do you have any idea what happened and your emotions right now? I think that's the dumbest rule in swimming. Owen beat me fair and square. He used to be on that toe of the podium. He was excited. That's a huge win for him, right? He earned that. He earned that, and that's his emotion, right? That's what we get in the sport of swimming when we do well. We train all year for a moment like that, and to have him disqualified, I think, is the dumbest thing ever. Well said. Do you mind he works I so hard every day. He is going to be on that number one trophy. I am not going to stand up there. Ross, do you mind if I, uh, uh, if I ask Craziness. You? They need to rescind that rule immediately. What the fuck? That is BS. His race was over. I know, right? Wasn't interfering with anybody. And then, speaking of what the fuck, Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Genius Teacher of the Year. Tonight, shocking video showing Albuquerque high school students sparring with real swords mm. in the middle of chemistry class. As you do. It's right here. That's how you're supposed to use it like this. And this wasn't teens going rogue, according to a new lawsuit filed by one student who was injured. Yeah, you think? Their teacher, Loviata Mitchell, announcing earlier on this day in June of 2022 that she had a surprise for the class, telling them to arrange their desks into a circle, handing one student a rapier-style sword and the other a katana, what could according go wrong? to the lawsuit. Then instructing the students to fight as a two-minute timer counted down. What? But shortly after this video was taken, what? one student allegedly slicing yeah! another student's no wrist shit. with a katana-style sword, uh -huh. severing multiple nerves and tendons. Her surgeon says when he was in there doing the repair that he could feel where the sword had actually indented in the bone. That student's family now suing the school district, so. the assistant principal, and Mitchell, uh -huh. alleging as she bled in the classroom, the teacher did not seek immediate medical attention. I'm sure she's freaking instead out. Instead, telling students, quote, I'm in trouble, yeah. ordering them to delete any video recordings they oh had my taken, God, this and idiot. then attempted to call the school's medical oh office. Oh, God, you're the so stupid. The response was not what you would expect. Uh -huh. It took no. about 30 it's minutes. It's exactly what I would expect some idiot who brought swords in for the kids to fucking play with or anyone called 911. An accident report written by the assistant principal saying the teacher brought a prop to school to show a lesson on metal and melding. That's not but a prop. responding paramedics say the sword appeared to be real. It's real! Almost two years later, the lawsuit alleging the student is still struggling oh to God. perform normal tasks so after surgery and extensive physical therapy. She's lost a lot of mobility and strength and sensation in in her yeah, you about to lose your job, your teaching career, it's all over. What a dumb mistake. Who could have possibly seen that coming? Everybody with a fucking brain. God damn it, lady. And then, uh, did you guys see this crazy video? So this just got released. This happened, I guess, last year. The National Guard shooting at a Minnesota driver. Uh, so this happened, I guess, during the COVID curfews. And uh, some car just, I guess, didn't know the curfew or something, was just driving it. This is America, folks. They turn America into basically Fallujah. They open fire on an innocent car. These fucking cowardly sacks of shit in the National Guard. Like it's a fucking pipe bomber or something. Like it's a fucking car bomber. Like it's a terrorist or something. Watch this shit. Hey, whoa, shots fired, shots fired. I guess it's 2020. Newly released video shows a member of the Minnesota National Guard opening fire on a civilian driver out past curfew in the days following George Floyd's killing. Oh, that's what it is. George Floyd's killing. 
I guess they were scared because it might have been a black person. Told me to shoot. Told me to shoot. I said shoot. Who told you to shoot? You didn't. Let me get shot. That was less lethal, dude. He said shoot. The guardsman who shot at the car said he feared for his life and was following orders from a local sheriff's how did you office sergeant your life? who had actually ordered the car. That to car was nothing. Look how far that car is from him. How the fuck did you fear for your life from a car that far away from you? None of these people should have guns, folks. Be hit with non-lethal marking rounds and not live fire. This country's so fucking stupid. We have shots fired with the uh, National Guard down here. Said shoot. You said shoot! Said shoot. New body-worn camera footage oh, and internal reports show the confusion between the different agencies, who were among hundreds of officers deployed after riots, left a path of destruction in South Minneapolis and portions of St. Paul in May 2020. Shots fired? Who fired? Who fired? Yeah, fucking morons, god damn it. This is why we can have nice things. But they can kill you. They can kill you folks and get away with it. And then one more I'm gonna finish on this one, folks. You guys hear about this story? Apparently. They recorded humpback whales for the first time ever having gay sex. Yeah. Humpback whales photographed having sex for the first time and both were male. What? The first time they ever filmed them and it's two dudes. The once in a lifetime encounter took place as two photographers were out in the waters near Maui, Hawaii. And everybody just soon noticed something unexpected about the snaps. Gay. Fucking gay as shit. And, uh, they asked the whales for a comment, and they were like, we're called humpback whales. Why do you think they call us that? We're basically butt-fucking all day long. There's not a single hump back here that I won't fucking pump, right? As soon as you guys leave, I'm going to fuck this dude in his blowhole. That's what they said. So anyway, not surprising. I already knew whales are pretty gay. I mean, come on. Shh. And all right, folks, that's my show. Hails to the air. Uh, uh, if you bail out, please hit the like button. Please leave comments. Please uh, join my patron. Very important. You'll feel good about it. Oh, I also want to give a shout out. I got a uh, uh, unboxing to do real quick. Hopefully this person is still around. I, I meant to do this earlier, but I would do it now instead. I hope there's a, uh, I didn't look in here for a note to see if there's a note. Hell yeah, there's a note. All right. I'll read it to you. To trusty, never rusty, Dusty Smith. All right. Thanks, Satan. You finally got this uh, box. I've been trying to get this to the P.O. box here in Kansas since about 11, 15, 23. What? My um, rides broke down. I don't have as many friends as I used to when I was uh, able to work. But I finally was able to get this done. Today is 104-2024. Who knows what date you will get this? I got it yesterday. By the way, no damn taxi in this town anymore either. This town either. I don't know how you feel. No Ubers or anything. Anyway, I wanted to show some love to your doggies. Maybe you could show us a little video of the dog. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Sometime. I bet many would like to see it. Yes, many have requested a video of my dogs. They're so fat now. I'm glad you exist. Dusty. I'm glad you exist. Thank you for all you do. Yours truly scott keith great scott hell yeah great scott hook me up i got this big old tire for the dogs they're gonna love this and it's got some uh, tennis ball chew toys inside of the tire fucking amazing and some milk bone they're already so fat and spoiled and they're gonna be even more fat and spoiled and thanks to you scott very generous i appreciate it so much and if you guys want to send something to my animals there is a p.o box in the description of every video i do and uh, you also can send anything you want to there's also a link to my animal sanctuary wish list on amazon so all of that cats want the uh want the uh 
kitty party, but we got to read the Super Chats first. Dusty, do any people of the view understand how primary elections work? Also, I, too, have used the current conflict to call my friends list. It's a red line. Free Palestine can type Israel or genocide. Yeah, people say to me all the time, I've been watching you forever, Dusty. I gave you money. I gave you lots of money, Dusty, and I'm so disappointed. First off, fuck you, okay? I appreciate if you don't do the show, but I can't be bought. And you can't guilt me into believing something I don't or to saying shit I don't believe because you fucking gave me money. If you thought for one second you could do that, you never even watched the show or paid attention to it. I'm never going to sell out. I appreciate anything you guys give me. I appreciate you supporting me, but it doesn't buy shit from me. I'm going to still believe what I believe and say what I want to fucking say regardless. Um, and thank you, Pidjank. Free Palestine. Can't type Israel genocide here. Oh, God damn it. Fucking YouTube. Got my social security day, and here's a few ducats for the kiddies. Love you, dude. Love you, Sharon Pate. Good to see you tonight. Thank you for being generous. Justin Joseph, I can't wrap my head around wagging a finger in the face of Palestine Americans who had families slaughtered and telling them not to be a single-issue voter pre-Palestine. Yep, that's how you get Trump elected. You're going to pretend it, when Trump gets elected, if he does, they're going to be like, oh, you guys did it. But nope, you guys did it, but not for not listening. All we had to do is pressure Joe Biden to standing up and doing anything other than what the fuck he's doing now, and you guys won't do it. And 10 more Kaltasi memberships from BBC. Amazing. Love BBC. See the client despair itself. Emulator Aaron. I did see that. Disappointed from Ethan. Be better, Ethan. Social Lust. Uh, Janu on YouTube put out a video highlighting comments. He he. H3H3 made about Air Force pilot. Yeah, I saw some of that. It was disappointing. But, I mean, uh, you know, they have a, a questionable path past on the Israeli conflict, so I'm not surprised to see that. Thank you, Dustin. Love you, bro. Stressing right. I already read that. All right. Anything pop up? Um, nope, it didn't pop up. All right. Time for the kitty party, folks. Hey, uh, I'll be back on Monday, Monday, Monday. I'll get the weekend off. going to watch some 3D movies. going to play some Bellatro. I'm going to have some fun. I hope you guys have fun out there. Uh, be sure to join me on Monday. For another episode of the world's greatest show i will work all weekend uh, so if you like what i do please sit up for my patreon and support the show um because i need it and now let me uh, turn on a little music we'll play a uh, wobble wobble which is an original song by dusty smith you can find this if you google wobble wobble by dusty smith it's out there kitty party kitty party You're looking at it, come get it. Come on, it's expensive. $15, $15 for this box, guys. Fucking inflation. Wobble, wobble. Wobble, 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 Get it. You guys appreciate you for joining me. You guys be something fun all the weekend and think of me. I'll see you guys on Monday and let's enjoy the after party. After party begins right now for all of you dust buddies and all of you patrons. So join me. Gonna be a good show. See the rest of you guys later. Good night, y'all. Love you. Come on, come on, come on, come on.